We are in the house. Is that a Mets shirt? Yeah, that's a Mets shirt. Gooden and Strawberry and Wilson and Hernandez and Oh, is is that in honor of um the uh, drug addicts? Oh. No, nah, that's not <laughs> no bars off. Huh. Yeah. MCs take no bars off. Another open bar segment virtually. You know, man, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for subscribing. I am Shah Stimuli. I am Boardwalk Brown. We are No Bars Off, a podcast where we break down lyrics, praise artists, salute the pen, the almighty bar. The almighty pen. Yes. And today we are blessed, fortunate enough to, to speak to a writer. This is our favorite segment of the show, the open bar, where the bar is open. Nothing like it. 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Shout out to all the audio podcast listeners, man. But we almost have 5,000. By the time they see this, we'll be at 5K. That's still wild to me. The, yeah. audio, the audio podcast following is wild. They, they listen and download immediately. I appreciate the love. We got to salute y'all and thank y'all for tuning in. Like The, the love yeah. is real. When you, we, appreciate that. we appreciate you like to listen to us and hate to see us. <laughs> love, it, love it, love it. But t- tonight is so monumental because we got our first battle rapper legend. Um, yeah, battle rap legend. But yeah, not, yeah, get it right. <laughs> not just a battle rap legend, a guy that is... Uh, um, just a wordsmith, an artist. True. Uh, I want to say just I've, I've seen his grind for so many years, like just going from what he did in the studio to on the streets to doing something that, man, if you're if you a rapper, right, think, think about standing in front of another rapper trying to, to degrade him with bars and y'all going back and forth. That's like the true essence of yeah, that's, the essence. Right? That's, that's the essence of it. That's you know, where it all started at. <laughs> that's that's where it starts at. And then to that's be able to at. come out of that arena and go into another arena and make records and make songs and, and still be relevant after so many years in the game, man. True. I mean, it's 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 just we, we gotta salute. We gotta yeah. salute the whole the whole URL and everybody else that's been affiliated with that for, for maintaining that level of integrity in part and that part of the game. True. But Tonight we want to talk about 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 this album, this Filthy Karma album. So I want to bring to the open bar segment to No Bars Off, my bro. Hey, we need Cortez. a round of applause. Round of applause for Cortez. Round of applause. Yo, Cor, what up, man? Shut up, my boy, man. Yo, man. First off, pleasure for y'all having me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you know uh, you know the history, man. We're yeah, gonna get into it. We're gonna have a good yeah. time tonight. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm let me, let me I really Ball Walk Brown, Cortez. Yeah. Uh, salute, Pleasure salute, you, salute. Bro. I yeah. see you a Mets fan. I see I, I see good I in, you know what I mean? I see strawberry I, there. Okay. Strawberry my grandfather, my, my grandfather likes you. So you know what I mean? Ah. He, he a diehard. <laughs> that's me. He yeah, yeah. Me, a good man. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Coney, that's Coney Island, you know, Coney Island, best style. Yes, you know, sir. Flap us over here. We Mm-hmm. Brooklyn in the building. It was good, man. It was good, oh, man. Man, man, proud of you, brother, for all the success and everything that you've you've been doing over the years. Yes. Um, and I was telling I was telling Brown about a conversation we had many years ago. I don't know if you remember, but we were talking about the the struggle for being a battle rapper and making songs. Mm-hmm. And this is before the URL kind of took off and became a a, a thing mm-hmm. where people could live off a of battle rap. And I think I was explaining to you that, you know, this wasn't an and one type thing. I felt like the battle rap lane is a is an, a legit lane that shows artistry that a lot of us rappers that can write rhymes and write songs will never be able to do. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, I, I definitely agree. Salute, like uplift that, <laughs> like, you know, lean, lean into that. I didn't say that word, but lean into that, like, because brother seeing you on that stage is i can't even explain the the level of professionalism and mastering your craft that it takes so that's just one aspect of what you do so thank you thank you bro thank you bro you know it's crazy we go we go way back and and it's because of our era with battle rap people were battling to get record deals People weren't realizing that it was something that could be monetized and made a career out of. It was more like it was more or less looked at as, as like a, a stepping stone or like a platform to get somewhere else. And the one thing that I take pride in is that era, 2008, 2009, 
2012. Yeah. We changed the whole game. Like monetized it, sold out events, and realized that and went global with it. So it was like Man, oh, well, we figured out the formula, our class did that. So I'm glad, you know, it's like a yeah. it's like you know, like the ninety six NBA draft for like the two thousand and four yep. draft, like those are right. special drafts. I feel yeah, like that that's what we did for right. battle rap. You yeah. know what I mean? So you know, and you was right. You definitely say, yo, don't shy away from it. Yeah. People that shot away from it, they look bad when they came back. So That's it right. was like embrace it, you know yeah. what I mean? And actually that that pushed me to do with the mixtape. Remember, I think I named it uh, Exception to the Rule. Yes. That was the whole inspiration behind it because I was like, yeah. you know what? He's right. I should embrace this. Let me just show I could do both, yeah. you know, and just the consistency over the time, you know. We're right. here, you know. You know? <laughs> it, it, it definitely, yeah. definitely a journey. Definitely wow. a journey. For real, for real. Yes. We want to talk about Filthy Karma and yes. your inspiration for it and, and what, it, what it means. Mm -hmm. I mean, us... uh, Filthy Karma, the, first of all, shout out to Crisis. Yes. One thing I wanted to do was after the Resolutions 1 and 2 albums, people really started like respecting like the music aspect a lot more after yeah. the pandemic. So I wanted to zone in with one producer. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I was always a fan of Rock Him and Eric B. I was always a fan of like, you know, a, a, a rapper producer type of combination. You know, uh, I always so me and Crisis we linked up and we did the album and we didn't have a title at first. But the term "filthy calm" is something I've been running with, but just didn't know how to like, how do I say like a how to like a, a roll it out. Yeah, And the inspiration behind it is what I'm seeing nowadays, all these kids, just social media, just the new culture coming up. They, they, you know, and we did this too. We was in the trenches. A lot of us had to do things illegally to get where we were at and become hardworking citizens or make an earning and make an honest living. And your past always catches up to you. Right. And it's like as soon as that dude gets that record deal or as soon as that dude uh, uh, gets into the NBA, it's like they tear you down, you get mm. killed. These rappers get shot. These rappers get locked up. The Rico charges come. And it's yeah. not just karma. I feel like it's filthy karma because it's like, mm. and they doing them filthy. Like he's legit. He legitimized right. himself. And they wait for that to bring back your past. It's like, I'm not a threat to society no more. Mm -hmm. I don't live in a hood. I'm not selling drugs no more. You know, there's no more spinning blocks and, and, and shooting yeah. and all that. And you right. wait till now to lock me up to make me the example. Okay. And, you know, that was the inspiration behind it. You know, yeah. it's like, I always want to, always like to drop gems in my music. But I don't want to oh. be a preacher. I don't want to mm -hmm. preach. I don't want, you know, the kids don't want to hear that. So you yeah. have to sprinkle mm -hmm. those, those, those gems, you know, drop those gems like that. So, so speaking of dropping those gems, I know like being in a battle rap space, it's kind of difficult to drop gems and at the same time use them to kind of disrespect your opponent. So you got to yeah. kind of pick and choose what kind of content you bring to a battle rap stage versus an album. Mm -hmm. So going into working on this project, and again, coming from that battle rap background, did you go into it with an intent to show, hey, I'm not just a battle rap. I can put songs together. I can make hits. I can do this. I can do that just as well as everybody else. Or did you just go in with uh, a theme in mind or just like an, an, an overarching, you know, kind of theory in mind that you wanted the album to sound like? I feel like in the past, Cortez might have had done that. Like, oh, mm -hmm. let me just show them I can make music. Let me show them I can do a party song or do a, do a, a story. Or, yeah. I, I'm, I'm past that, bro. I feel like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm at the point now where I'm so comfortable and I just know. Like, it's not cockiness, but it's just like, bro, I put in my work. I know. I'm nice. You know what I'm saying? I know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. And the responses from features, from certain videos that I've been doing yeah. the last three, four years, it's like people are like, yo, like, you're not the typical battle rap stereotype. So right. I don't have to go and say it when people are saying that. So my my mind frame into this album was just rapping. I'm yeah. not doing anything outside of that. When people hear Cortez, I, I fully understand what the people expect from me. They want to hear bars. They want to hear some dope shit. I throw a little fly shit in there for the chicks here and there, mm -hmm. you know, and I spit oh, yeah. my game. But, you know, 
it's it's you got to fully understand what your fan base wants, and I feel like right. if you do that, especially now as independent artists, you'll be all right. So you you mentioned you mentioned you don't want to preach. We've all had that that toting that fine line of being good mm-hmm. dudes, want to say mm-hmm. something, but you don't want to sound preaching and alienate mm-hmm. your audience. But at the same time, you mentioned you're not in the street anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So was Filthy Karma like a reflection of the past? Like songs like Posing the Sprinter and Posing the Sprinter and Play My Position and Wicked and Brick by mm-hmm. Brick. Are you are you saying like this was the past and this is the the karma that would catch up to me? Or are yes, you like, yes, okay. this is this is all different instances of it. Like with Posing the Sprinter, right? I'm 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 removed from the streets, right? But there are instances where if I'm gonna go do a show mm-hmm. and we're out of town and you don't got your security and your man's is with you, you got to hold each other down. I wear nice jewelry. You know what I'm saying? My man might be having $10,000 on them. We're in places that we don't know nobody. So you still have to move militant or move with a certain code. And I feel like these young kids, they don't have no respect. They don't have nothing and they don't have no guidance. These Mm -hmm. little kids is out here running around, toting guns, putting them on camera, all this. So when I say that, I be like, nah, you know what I mean? I made a mill on the road before I did it with flows. You know what right. I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, you know, keep a pole in the sprinter when we pull up the shows. It's like, I'm still on point. These right. little niggas is out here wilding. I'm going to make it home to my family. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Right. But at the same time, it's just, it's real. Yeah, It's real. Mm-hmm. We all been put in those predicaments. Gospel rappers get put in those type of predicaments <laughs> right. at times. Right. You feel right. what I'm saying? It happens. It's, it's life. Mm-hmm. And you have to reflect life. You know, my son, he raps now. He's on his drill, yeah. right? And he didn't even tell me he he rapped what? until he let me hear a song. And then mm-hmm. I was like, yo, this is hard. Who's this? He was like, me. I was like, mm-hmm. think you rap? Why you ain't tell me? He was like, nah, yeah. I didn't want to come to you until right. it was like, you know, until I felt like I, my, I got my weight up. So now mm-hmm. I reflect on, and I know him. He's outside. You know, he has his own situations. I'm not there all the time. So when mm-hmm. I sit there, I'll be like, okay, cool. I got to give knowledge to kids like him, not just him because he's my son, but just understanding what they do. I felt like mm-hmm. our generation, the older generation didn't, didn't understand us. Hip hop was like yeah. banned from our parents and they didn't understand mm-hmm. what we was doing. Yeah. So, you know, we have that advantage where it's like, yo, you know, what to take literal, what to tell you not to do. You know, don't don't be a fool. Don't indict yourself on camera. You know, certain mm-hmm. things like that. And, you know, don't put yourself in those positions. But uh, even with Play My Position, like, to me, that's the my favorite lyric on the whole album is on that record with Crisis. Because I said, Pops mm-hmm. overdosed, but it's dope what his son did. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, to mm-hmm. me, that is, like, mm-hmm. so, like, simple, but yeah. fire yeah. and real. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I took those negatives. I've seen those things in my life mm-hmm. and I made something dope out of it. You know, you mentioned in your son, <laughs> Ron, right? It, it kind of like, I, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> ask a little more. Now I'm like, um, has he had, you said he did drill. He does drill. So is he talking yeah. like, is he talking reckless? Got mm. ops and all that, like he <laughs> said, got ops and all got that, and all that, you know. Wow. I mean? But How from his hood, I mean, my son is nineteen. Okay, wow. and his hood where he's from, like his hood where my son's mother raised him and stuff, it's not nice. It's not good. Mm. I will go pick him up, but I still would have to return him home. You know what I'm saying? She, mm. He lived with his mom's, so his his projects, his hood is like they like. It's crazy over there. And it's like he doesn't, he's not removed from there. He played ball. He was outside. He went to school. He graduated. He did all the things, but they're still put in certain predicaments. And one of his best friends got murdered. Mm-hmm. One of his other friends got shot. You know, these kids is really wilding out here. And everybody got beef with everybody. So it's like, I'm like, damn, okay. Instead of, you know, like disciplining them or something like that, because he's a grown man. I got to understand it more. You know, we used to, I'm dissing people in my battles and all this and saying this and all that. And if you didn't understand, you'd be like, yo, it's it's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing. It's like, I got to understand what's going on, you know? And and I just try to give him like the yellow brick road. I'm like, look, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of situations. I know how you need to market yourself. I know how you need to move. You know, we're going to get you to a certain point where, 
You can shy away from all this. You know what I mean? If you want to be a real artist, if you want to take it serious, I could throw you the alley. I'm a, I could I could tell you, I could draw up the play. Just bring the ball down, you know what I mean, down the court. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of, you know, that's kind of where we're at with it now, where he's listening. But for years, see, he's 19, maybe since, like, I started Resolutions 1 in 2020, when I started going into making those albums, he was right there in the studio, quiet, just listening. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I never forced him to rap. I never told him to rap. He was just in the studio listening. Yo, Dad, I like that beat. Yo, you should, yeah, that beat, my, I would listen to that beat. You know what I mean? Like, to keep me current. Yeah. And then from there, you know what I mean? When he started making music, I'm like, oh, and it's good. Like, I would tell him if it was trash. I'm going to keep it real. I'd be like, yo, this is not for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's not that. So it's even more motivation now to give more game. And at the same time, show him the process. Mm-hmm. Like he's seen the process of me creating an album from thinking of a name, creating artwork, going in the studio, writing, picking out beats, writing records, getting the features, mixing that. He's seen the whole process. Mm-hmm. Joints with Met the Man, like he's been there with me in the studio when I work with Meth, when I work with Spec, you know what I mean? And he's just like, oh, okay, this is how it goes, you know? And he's seen the actual finished product, the video, you know, the streams, the the, the world star, all that. And he's like, yo, I, I literally have watched this go. So I'm like, yo, bro, we could do this all day, you know? If I had somebody like me at, at 19, I think I'd have been a millionaire before I was 25. Right. You know what I mean? So I've seen fathers force their kids to do things and it, it don't come out the same. You know, the fact that he has a passion for it, I'm gonna embrace it. Why not? Yeah, um, and if he got ops, I got ops. So <laughs> <what he did. laughs> I believe that. That's how it goes. It is what it is. That's how it goes. So, you know, we have verses that we was like, we could sit and dissect and go line for line, and you know, flex your pen. But then we was like, man, I would want to know what made him include this narrative. Like, you know, we was like, yo, is it true? Is it, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so we had these Calm questions yeah. and I was like, man, man, let's just, let's just talk about the story. You know what I'm saying? So I'll just- tell you what, I'll tell you a funny thing. Uh, 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 a friend of mine, uh, she had hit me and was like, yo, you know, my mother's name is Candy and my father's name is Hector. Right. And I'm like, word, like, 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 yo, I was like, yo, that's crazy. You know what I mean? But I was like, for real? She was like, yeah. I was like, yo, that's crazy. But the story is fictional. I wrote it on the spot. It is fictional, but it's not fictional to me as far as it's something that's far-fetched. It's not far-fetched. To be honest with you, when I was writing the record and the outcome, Crisis was there, and I'm just writing. I'm writing, wrote maybe like an hour to me because I really wanted to detail the story. Mm-hmm. And my inspiration was more or less the video. Like, I don't want to rap in all my videos. I want things to be cinematic. I want things to become more of a movie. For wow. me personally, all the years of me rapping, that's what's motivating me now, like the visuals and yeah. and, and the stories, documentaries and stuff like that. So yeah. I was like, yo, I think that would be real dope to just have a – a story as the video like yeah. i'm not rapping at all right. you know let, 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 you know the fans that haven't heard it you know what i'm saying let them let them uh get a little bit more. yeah kenny was a name Motherless, quiet, she was young and misguided Men lusting in private, get drunk and get high She influenced by the culture Vultures, ain't no daddy round here to coach her 14, but she looked 20 Men spending on the daily Pregnant, a baby with a baby Her daughter named Brett Only fan for them chips Ass out in every pick Got candy, fake lit She used to them tricks She don't settle for no basic Fuck her for the moment if you spend for the occasion Hotel arrangements, clock in each hour she counting each dollar, she know she means power The love ain't there, so she lusting over cash And Britain, she growing up fast Dropped out of school, she ain't focused on no class Learned from candy, now Brit taking tabs Home all alone, all the years done past Shit for all that designer, she was fucking for a bag Slutting for the drip, jumping in and out of whips She get it from her mama, she 
looking for them chips. Candy out of town as a mom, she ain't focused. All the wild Brits start moving on some whole shit. Heart cold, frozen, with no ghosts, hopeless. Lost innocence, you want a rose, not no roses. Posted late nights by the trap, all up in the mix. Heck, the 46 started pushing up on Brit. She told him what it is, the money make her happy. Heck, the old enough to be her daddy. Late nights alone, heck, the fucking on Brit. Candy back home from a month long trip. She woke up in the crib, heck, the fucking on her kid. The fuck is all this? Heck, the reaching for the grip. See, Candy knew heck, the she jumped out of fear. While back, they used to fuck, but she ain't seen him in some years. He tricked on the gear, paid bills monthly. Candy never cared, she only used him for the money. On to the next, she was gone for a check to collect, and for that, heck, lost all respect, Damn. but heck, can't forget, nah. since then, he was scheming, steaming, and made a promise one day he'd get even, see, heck, had a family, fully invested, tricking up on candy, never using no protection, nah. but here comes the lesson, cause years down the line, heck, and his wife getting sick up all the time, lost in the days, lost. calls me for days, it was all in his face, heck, he tested positive for AIDS. His wife did too. Now there's tears for the family. Only girl he cheated with was Candy. Anger in his heart. Poems on the weapon. Lost his direction. Thoughts of depression. Plotted on revenge. He was gone, moving reckless. Year to get even. Got her daughter infected. Back to the crib now. Candy tried to run. He put one up in the wick. Then he laid Brit down. Shit foul. Hector did it for lust. Candy did it for likes. Four lives lost. Karma's the price. Mm. Mm. It's different karma from everybody's different Everybody. angle. They they each receive their own karma, you know. Wow. <laughs> Shout the crisis on the on the music too. That's it. Um, yeah. It definitely had it had a it had an eerie just just vibe with it. You, know you knew saying? exactly something like you knew it was a story to be told. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. The feel the feel was definitely captured. Everything you talk about, you know, mm -hmm. is cinematic. You know, we 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 got that. Yeah, man. The, the the first the first so you said that you did it was no basis, like no inspiration for it. like you kind of just wrote no, it this, this, no no. I'm what I was saying was it's not a real story, but the inspiration right. is there. The inspiration is I feel like a lot of these girls are lost mm -hmm. and they only worried about the bag, right? They're not really doing their homework and they mm -hmm. don't care. You know what I mean? This guy is 46 years old. She don't care. You know what I mean? She told mm -hmm. him what it is. You right. know what I'm saying? The money make her happy. Hector mm -hmm. old enough to be her daddy. Like oh, she knows don't, what it don't is. do our job for us. Oh, don't do our job for us. You guys don't do our job for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Both of y'all like, yo, hold on, chill. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. This, right. is, this is a different type of show, man. All right, all right, all right. The, the all reason right. why I asked that was because, like, for me, like, it, it has a real meet the parents type feel. Like mm -hmm. it has, it has a like that old Blueprint Two joint uh, from Hove. Like it has the real, the circular, the circular, <laughs> the, the circular. Uh, you know how it all bought, you know, full circle. Yeah, like, exactly. it a real yeah. the parents type feel. So that's why I asked that. But mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, thank you. That's 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 a dope comparison. Yeah. yeah. So so we start with Candy, just giving a real vivid picture of her. You know, motherless, young, misguided, men, lust in private, drunk, getting high, influenced mm -hmm. by the culture. And then you throw in vultures. Right. So right. right there, when you say she's influenced by, is it, is it hip hop culture or is it the the, the white social men? Social media. Social media, okay. Social media, influenced by the culture. Like mm -hmm. what you see on the gram every day. Mm -hmm. People think the gram is real life. It's oh, not yeah. real life. They do. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah, I, I was just having this conversation about the frequency of um, surgery and how mm -hmm. you know how common it's becoming. Like it's like going to the dentist now, just getting yeah. tummy tucks and, and things like that. And, and we're not shaming anybody for doing it. It's just you know it's just a different time that if you're mm -hmm. a youngster growing up and seeing the normalcy mm -hmm. of people just getting mm -hmm. surgery with the intention of either posting online or. or Whatever it is, like like this, like the song suggests. But these girls aren't even twenty one years old. You're getting yeah, body, then your body's, body's not fully developed. developed. Mm -hmm. so, you haven't had a kid. You know, like these women are getting their bodies before they even had a child. Yeah, you know? yeah, and mm -hmm. and like like that's the part that's scary. Like again, we're not shaming anybody for making these choices. Right. Mm -hmm. If you are a teenager with a body that's not developed, and you think it's normal to just go get surgery, 
That's, yeah. a, that's an issue. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's an issue. definitely not normal. It's not normalized that. Mm-hmm. Just just talking about men spending on the daily. Um, I <laughs> I noticed on Instagram, right? If if a if a bad chick, and this is really crazy, a couple of times a bad chick has followed me, mm-hmm. right? Out of nowhere. And I follow him back. And then I get a DM. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like, what you trying to do? And I didn't know this existed. My naive self. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, are you on Demon Town? It's like all these all these phrases that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> Demon Town. Wow, you're <laughs> Demon Town. <laughs> <laughs> the woman that finally just flat out asked me, are you trying to pay for this box? That's wild. Like, Let me refer you to a friend of mine that uh, <laughs> would be willing to do it. <laughs> the thing this- is, though, they don't look at it as a, like, oh, I'm not a prostitute. Like, right? I'm not no porno. No. But it's like the morals behind it. It's like, do you really understand, like, like there's no value if mm-hmm. if I if when I'm done with you if the next man spend a bag he can get the same thing I could get exactly. like you think it's because you a baddie but mm-hmm. men how we think is like right. eh. and sometimes you might blow the bag but you know you're not taking it serious and then they'll sit there and be like but well, why nobody's taking me serious down the line and it's like mm-hmm. yo like you're not exclusive like this this and that that's not difficult to do. You know what I mean? But it's a crazy time. So you're right. It's crazy oh, it's time. A wild time, bro. <laughs> pregnant with a baby. A baby. Pregnant. A baby with a baby. Baby with a baby. Yeah. A baby with a baby. 14 with a baby. So, of course, this cycle is going to continue. So, yeah. My mm-hmm. daughter named Britt. Only fans for them chips. Ass out in every pick. Got mm-hmm. candy, fake lit. And now you think about that. Like, yeah. her daughter's popping. So, she feel like she's, you know what I mean? How wild is mm-hmm. that? Yeah, you know I mean? mm-hmm. because and again, that's the uh another side effect of a baby having a baby. What you think is cute really ain't. Mm-hmm. So that's crazy. A- now, mind you, now mind you, I threw the only fan things in there, of course, because it's you got to always reference what what the times are now. But no. that's how she hustled. Like that's how she made her bag. Right. Like she was like, "All right, I, I'm pregnant. I'm I'm 14. I got a baby on the way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying." These men are throwing chips at me. Yeah. Oh, I could do OnlyFans. Why mm-hmm. not? Right. It's safe. <laughs> like why right. not? Like you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. These things, these things in this, in this again. There's no daddy to coach her. There's no, there's nobody to tell you mm-hmm. that's not how you're supposed to do things. You yeah. know, and that's why I put fake lit. It's like mm-hmm. you think you're lit, but you're not really lit. You, you wilding out here. You but, know? Um, I want to talk about a line. Pussy yeah. means power. So. Yeah. Us being locked in, you know, got our queens. Happy wife, happy life is a terminology that that gets thrown out there. Mm-hmm. Talk about pussy meaning power. Talk about the females mm-hmm. and how they kind of control how we move and and mm-hmm. what that means once they know that we do that we do it for them. Well, to be honest with you, early on, like in my twenties, like yeah. I always, I always was at the cool table. High school, I was at the cool table. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, like, I always, I always was a bachelor. I had my, I was the first person in my hood with my own crib. Oh, shit. So my crib was the crib where niggas brung they shorties to the crib. Yo, cool. Let me use the crib, bro. I got shit. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I was that dude. So early on, until later on, I didn't realize, like, yo, like, women will wrap you up and like. You won't get your mm-hmm. shit done because you're just chasing mm-hmm. women. You know what I mean? Eventually, you sit there and be like, hold on. I got to focus on me. I got to get my bag. And mm-hmm. then you start chilling out a little bit. You know, we all go through those those whole phases. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> but you realize, true. if you don't go through that whole phase, these women are going to wrap their fucking box around you. You ain't going to know what to do. <laughs> you ain't going to know what to do. It don't matter if you're 20 or 35, 40 years old. Uh-huh. If you're just outside, they're going to get you. You know what I mean? Guys don't know how to act. So we know that. And you have to just be real with yourself. Like, ah, uh, yeah, she got me. Come on. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. A lot of times we learn 
by making those mistakes. Yeah. Uh, everybody had that one chick that just had them sprung. Everyone had that one chick that might have had you spend a little bit more than that was out your budget, but you was like, damn, son. Damn, my <laughs> box is crazy, though, bro. I'm not going to lie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> We've all had that. When you the see power, it. man. That's the power. You know you playing yourself. It's power. You know you playing you know yourself. It. You know it. It happens. You know, yeah. but, uh, you know, over time, yeah. You know, we look at, like me, I tell my son, like, yo, bro, that's not it. Like, you know what I mean? You're going to learn. You like her. I know you like her. Like, you know what I mean? I'm going to just let you, I'm going to let yeah. you fuck, fuck yeah, that up and realize. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You know what I mean? It's part of, especially for men, it's part of the maturity. But pussy, yeah, pussy is pussy. power. Wars right. have started over pussy. As Rick growing up fast, dropped out of school. She ain't focused on no class. Learn from candy. Brit started taking tabs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Home all alone. Years done passed. All for design. And now she fucking for a bag. Son. So not only are you fucking for a literal bag, like a designer bag, but the bag that it takes to pop the designer. Yes. Great double entendre. Yeah. Perfect, 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 perfect segue or perfect ending to wrap all of that up to finish the picture. Yep. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Kind of into that kind of get into them, them few bars right there i mean i just feel like nowadays it's, it's all about that yeah. it's like it's all like you're not dating these guys for love mm -hmm. and no one cares like if a person's single and they want to do what they do you're grown right. but the goal is nowhere near commitment you're giving your body up. You're, you're you're sleeping with these people. You're doing all these things just for a name brand. Mm. Mm. So that has more value than yourself, and that should never be that way. Mm. You know, right. those are the things that bother me. I'll be like, yo, so Gucci is more important than your respect? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. And there's <laughs> nobody cares. So it's like you just have to, like, see those things and be like, damn, like, yeah. it's crazy. I feel like we're putting you in a, a a conscious light right now by picking this. <laughs> you got me reflecting right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, like, yo, I thought Cole was gonna be shooting some ops, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought I ain't the spent a block yet. What's going on? We forty five minutes in. I know, so we good though. We nah, good. but I, I really like that though because it's, it's for me. I feel yeah. like storytelling is a lost art. Right. right. Absolutely. You know, um. Not a lot of people do with stories. Like I don't, I, I don't know when was the last album. You know, you might see a Kendrick, you might see a Nas, but like those are like elite, elite, elite artists that can do that. But I don't feel like a lot of artists do it. So, you know that that was the inspiration too. I will say that. Like yo, nobody yeah. doing stories. I, I, you know, what I mean, I want to dive into that. No, that was that was our inspiration too. Low key, we was yeah. like, you know, it's a standout just to hear a narrative. You know what I'm saying? True. Um. You, know, you you talk about slutting for the drip, jumping in and out of webs. You get it from my mama. You know this whole this whole thing with the mom being the influence, man. Mm -hmm. um, you know, out of town ain't focused all the while. Brit start moving on some whole shit. Heart cold, frozen. Um, just, just I want to just talk about the fact that a child can see something that their parent does and just you know move in that direction. And the parent, although you know what you were doing wasn't right, doesn't really step in and correct it. Like this She wanted before. rose, not no roses. So right. Like, we, was gonna, we was gonna get there. Like that was you the don't one. like that was the one. <laughs> it's all lit, yeah. It's all lit. It's just it's just guidance is everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you allow your child to see certain things too early, then it becomes the norm and it sh and certain things shouldn't be the norm until you can fully understand mm -hmm. what, why it's happening or what's going on, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, especially as a lady, I feel like a female needs, a, especially a female daughter, a female really needs both parents, mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. point of views. Males, I'm not, I'm, it was more important for me, just from my experience for the female to be raised by both parents or influenced by both parents more than the male. Now we need that too, yeah. but females really need that. You know what I mean? They're the ones that get left with kids. They're the ones that get left raising these kids by themselves, mm -hmm. you know, 90% of the time. Uh, they're not able to protect themselves the way we are. 
you know so it's like they really need that guidance so like what your child sees is everything especially if you got a little girl that's, i mean that's an interesting perspective I, I i i agree with you i feel like us being raised by by single mothers we can kind of get away with with a lot and we can still you know become grown men but i know for me i didn't see an example of, of a man does do you think that affects how we treat women though by not being raised definitely in- yeah. Definitely, definitely. Either either way, even if your father's in the picture, if if your father's cheating, yeah, and 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 you see your mom's hurting from that, you know, you and you know, you see your mom's crying every day because pops is out slinging dick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like you kind of learn, like, damn, that's a little fucked up. Yeah. Sometimes you get older and you the player too. And then you realize like, mm-hmm. okay, I get it. But at least you're able to assess both sides of the situation and be like, yo, I don't want to treat my, my wife like that. Or I don't want my kids to see that, you know, yeah. females got to get it rough. They see guys beat on them. Yeah. You know, leave them. Uh, they raise a kid, their parents kick them out. Like there's a lot of things that go into those decisions. Yeah. Young especially if you're sexually active young and you're not protected and you have a child, you know what I mean? So yeah. just from my experiences, from people that I've been with, people I've dated and just people I grew up with, I see that and I'll be like, yo, like, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it's not that sweet. You know what right. I mean? You really got to be careful what you're doing out here. Which which roles were you talking about? When you said roles, not roses. You said she want a rose, not rose, a rose. The toy, the oh, toy, yeah. all it takes yeah. is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, she'll see that in the crib yeah. Be nosy, Ooh. you know. You gonna mm-hmm. play with the roles, and then yeah. this nigga gave me roses. He's a bozo. He's yeah. a, yeah, he's you know, he ain't give me no money. Keep it's those like, fresh really? flowers, like, you bum. Huh? I, I said, keep those boy. fresh flowers, you bum. Yeah, yeah. It's, look at this bird ass nigga. He sent me some flowers. Fuck out of here, nigga. Send me some money. Hit yeah. my cash app. You hit know. Bro, I'm gonna hit my and cash. and I'm throughout this shit. whole song, if you notice, that was one thing I always wanted to do. Like, she get it from my mama or. You know, a baby with a baby. These are things that your parents have that parents have told us. Mm-hmm. Quotes, things that mm-hmm. you learn yeah. that I, I I throw in there because they're missing. Mm-hmm. You understand? So it's like that little twist of things that my mother used to tell me or my aunt used to tell me. And I'm like, okay, these are like the things that you're supposed to know, but you don't. You know? Candy out of town. She ain't focused. All that posted late nights. Now bred up in the mix. Hector 46. Start pushing up. She told him what it is. Money make her happy. Had to hold enough to be her daddy. The 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 funny, the crazy part about that line is, not only is he old enough to be her daddy, when you get to the end of the story, you realize he could be her daddy. He could be, yeah. You know what I mean? He like, could be. I left the door open for that. Right, You're right. That's what I'm saying. With that being open ended, he could be her daddy. When you find out he was fucking with her mom from the gate anyway, and mm. had been fucking around with her for so long, Brit ain't, but probably. What 18, 19 at this point now, if that, maybe 14. So he very well could be her daddy. So yeah, I like that. And if you look at it, if she's if she's if she had her at 14 mm-hmm. and Brit is only 18, that means Candy is only like 32, 33, 34, and Hector's 46. So Hector's oh, was, so he's was still, still he's older. Still, he's he's, 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 he's a generational, <laughs> generational slime ball. He was rocking the cradle of Back then, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, Did you a lot of times when you write your story, you kind of think of the ending first? Did you have the ending in mind, or were you just like flowing like yo? Oh, I to be what honest I'm with you, when I was telling Crisis, I was like, yo, is this typical? And he was like, You're bugging, do your ad libs, like go, like you know what I'm saying? Like, you're bugging, do the ad libs, you're bugging. This is crazy. And okay. I was like, You sure? You know, I felt like that's the one that's the one thing I, I doubted with this song. AIDS, HIV. It's not right, as right. not to say it's not bad like it is, but it's not yeah, as prevalent yeah. as it was mm-hmm. in the nineties and stuff. Right. You know, but don't nobody want no AIDS. Don't nobody want it. You know what right. I'm saying? So yeah. you know, I felt like, you know what, maybe this is also a way to just keep people reminded, like, yo, bro, there's still shit out there. You know what I'm saying? Protect yourself. So uh the ending was, I had like a somewhat of an idea, mm-hmm. but I, I really, like I said, I wrote it on the spot, but uh, mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to uh, reflect a little bit and just see like where I could go with the story a little bit, like play with it at that point, you mm-hmm. know? Because if you notice, once once they do stay walking the crib together, yeah, everything now is thinking, 
the whole scene stops. Mm. Everything is right. what he's thinking, what she's thinking, what they're thinking, gotcha. and, and 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 then everyone figuring out what's what's going mm -hmm. on here before it gets back into the crib. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's more or less that is inspiration from um what's the shit with Jay and Bleak, where the Come whole song is about them. Two. Come on, the base two. Base two. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, you know, that whole song is just their thoughts. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? As he approached, what up, Bleak? Then I pause. Oh, like, that's the only oh. thing. So yeah. that I wanted, to, I did want to take that inspiration from there like that. Yeah. 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 We, we just did Niggas Bleed, too. And, um, you know, that was a lot of Biggie's thoughts as well. That was yeah, <laughs> one of our finest <laughs> To me, you know, it was a tweet the other day. Someone asked, um who the best storytellers like in hip hop. And I said, mm -hmm. big to me is the best storyteller. Right. Somebody was like big. I was like, yo bro, almost every verse was a story. Right. It's just, you don't realize cause he had so many flows and bars. Mm -hmm. Everything was a stupid mm -hmm. motherfucker. He double parked by a hydrant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, yeah, what? Like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. You know. Now you gotta watch that episode. We went in. Yeah, you gotta watch. I'm gonna tap in. I'm yeah, nah, nah. I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Now, after this, I'm like, yo, I gotta catch nice. up. I, I love the segment. I got breaking down. So I'm like, yeah, I gotta tap in. So, True. what what sparked the um? Everybody die. Everybody got to die. Like what what made what made Heck have to pull it? Okay, yeah. Karma. You know, uh, I felt like it was a perfect ending to the album. Like, mm -hmm. all right, this is the message to end the album. You know what I mean? And 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 if, you, if that ain't filthy come, I don't know what is. True, true. Yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? So, you know, four lives were lost over that. So it's like, right. nah, this is perfect. You know what I mean? And then that's when I realized, oh yeah, this this ending is is good for the album. Yeah, you right. know? So, do you always write in the studio? Yeah, I don't. Mm -hmm. I rarely. I'm literally just came from the studio right now. I just I just had wrote a record, but I like hearing a beat on the spot and creating i don't huh the sky's the same way <laughs> yeah like i don't really want to think about the song because if i don't like it I i'll listen to it later and then just man eh. but if i hear something right then and there i'm like oh this is crazy my mind starts going i start mumbling i get a melody or i get a certain pattern and then i just you know what i mean oh no i gotta do this now if i don't do this now it's not gonna be the same i feel that way like records don't be the same Right, Maybe right. sometimes I'll go back and arrange it, mm. but the initial writing hooks mm. or bridges or whatever I have, yeah, I go to the studio ASAP. Unless somebody sends me a beat pack, but I'll do the voice notes. Got you. Mm. Got you, got you, got you. Mm. Brown, you got something? Like you said, nice ending to the album, but if I had to ask you, what's your favorite joint on the project? You're taking too long. You're taking too long. Everybody got one. You brick by brick. Brick by mm -hmm. brick. Okay. The beat. It's the beat to me. Right. Like mm -hmm. that beat is just crazy to me. You know what I mean? Like like that beat. I I, I really just that 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 beat just spoke to me. I'm gonna I'm play, I'm play it when we ride now. I'm 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 gonna let you. you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> nah nah, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Um, the special the um joint with thirty eight man. Um. Really yeah. enjoyed hearing y'all, y'all mesh together, man. Mm -hmm. That was dope. Yeah, what's, that was it. We did that in the studio together. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounded like I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to blow it up. If it was a, uh, if it was an email joint, but not. Nah, it's it sounded like nah, that. Nah. It sounded real cohesive. Yeah. 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 Everything. Everything except Ito was um was in studio. Um, everything. Uh, and only thing because Ito's and, and you know he's upstate. But uh, he still came down and we rocked out, you know, uh, another joint. But uh, special, I went to his crib. He was like, "Yo, come to my crib. Let's knock it out." You know what I mean? That was that was there. Flea in crisis and us. We always working together. Same mm -hmm. thing with Feeve. Same thing with Merkums. You know, uh, crisis raps and my man Doza raps too. They they mostly Doza as well. Even though he didn't do production on this album, he's done a lot of production for me too. So Doza and Crisis, that's like our triangle offense right there. Gotcha, so we gotcha. always work in the studio together. So what's what's the next battle? Um, actually, I got a I got a low key battle in Miami next weekend. Um, for for my boy Don Marino, but it's just a, a up and coming rapper named June Pease. So I'm gonna give him a little one rounder, you know, pick up a little check. Huh? 
<laughs> you doing charity, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You remember no, wrestling no. or superstars on Saturday? <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> little Thunder Lips action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brooklyn Brawler versus, you know what I'm saying? Brawler. Brawler. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Yo, real quick though, because I don't want to hold you, but the process from preparing for a battle. I seen you guys prepare for battles a couple of times when I came to the crib. I think you was you was working on some. Um, what's the difference with like creating the, the rhyme for a battle where you know it's acapella, it's spaced out, it's conversation, it's delivery, it's performance, as opposed to writing a song like do you get a dope line for a song be like nah let me hold that for a battle or, you know, <laughs> like, how does that sometimes it be both if sometimes it be both sometimes i'll know this is better for a battle than than a song or sometimes i'll be like this is better for a song than a battle you know that those things happen all the time i just how, think how do you go i don't like right i've tried certain things that i think is fire and they didn't yeah. go well and i'm like yeah ain't fuck with that <laughs> and then I'll just say it differently, like on a song. And then okay, everyone's okay. like, yo, that line is crazy. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was meant for a song. That was it. I was, <laughs> you learn through trial and error. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, these these things is different with battles. It's like they want you to be so aggressive and, like, like you know, like just direct. So yeah. sometimes I'll say some dope shit. But I'm like, that was dope. They'll be like, yeah, but that's you're not battling. You're just rapping. Mm. And it is an element to the battle rally. Like you do have to battle your opponent. So it happens, you know. It is what it is. But at this point, it's like you learn, you know what I mean? I'm, especially me. I've got 100 battles plus. Like, yeah. I've seen it all, you know what I mean? So I know basically what's going to work. I like writing records more than battle rapping. Really? It's that easier. Sense. That makes it's sense. It's more enjoyable, like fun, like... I like yeah. creating in the studio. It's like not pressure. Battle yeah. rap is a lot of pressure. I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. I gotta memorize this. Then I That's gotta, the then I gotta, then I gotta do the the acting part of it. Then I gotta get my breathing patterns. Then you know you gotta get on stage. You gotta move around. It's like a Broadway play, bro. Like, oh, uh, it's real. That shit is. Yeah, real. it's Hamilton. It's Hamilton. It's Hamilton. It's Hamilton for real, live. Yeah, it like it, it really is for what real. Is? With somebody in your face trying to demoralize you, like, and yeah. then in front of everybody. Let me let me let me tell let me tell you right. The craziest thing is like when you know you got some fire rounds. Yeah, and you and the eye chorus on you, you start rapping and nobody's reacting, um, and then nobody's reacting, and then you say a line and niggas is talking like, "Boo!" and you like, uh, "Okay, now everything that I've practiced for the last month has to go out the window, and I have to regroup after that round one and be like, all right, what I gotta do? I gotta freestyle, I gotta rebuttal, right. I gotta think of something that he says and flip it. I gotta get the crowd back on my so it's just." non-stop mm. pressure until the battle's over you know what i'm saying because imagine even if you finish rhyming and your opponent still has to rap the third that mm. battle's not over and if he's wilding on you you still feeling that pressure like i'm done like i want right. to get out of here already right. you can't you gotta sit there you know what i mean so wow. no nah, that don't happen in the booth yeah that's a different type of pressure <laughs> Yo, you know what this reminds me of? This is crazy because this was like, damn, it's 2023. That's this might have been like 2011. Yeah. And we was in the studio out here, me, Mickey, Mickey Fax, J. Cole. Um, and we were watching you versus Holla. Mm -hmm. Which I was there for. Mickey was there yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You in the footage, yeah. And in the moment, we all it was unanimous that you won, right? Mm -hmm. Mickey decides to Pull up the battle. This was 2011. He's like, yo, Hitman Holla beat Cortez. And we like, get the f out of here. What are you talking about? <laughs> we were there. And he, he proceeds to like show it and break it down and show like, because that's when he did the um, man, what? I'm saying. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yo, he didn't get the crowd response, but his, his rounds is better. I was like, man, get the hell out of here. Have you watched that battle recently? Dude, what, yeah, what you I, 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 yo, bro, people tweet that battle. That and Hollahan, they tweet that all mm. the time. Yeah. Like, I get at least 
three to five tweets a day about both those battles, like still. And it's the TikToks now. Oh, like yeah. people go back and they'll take they'll take that part from the TikTok and then it'll just yeah. like me and Hollahan I think is at like ten million on on TikTok. Oh, I'm like yeah. that's crazy. This, this and people think the battles just happened. Right. Oh, Hitman for Holler right. from Wildin' Out battle bat, you battled him Cortez. I saw on TikTok like you know it, it is what it is. So yeah, you know purpose, Hitman. <laughs> I even look at those things now, be honest with you, and I look at it, and I know I'm a better rapper now. Right, right, right. But the energy is different back then. So I look at it like, yo, you got to understand it's a different time, a yeah. different energy. There are lines that I'll sit there and be like, eh. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it was a different time. You know, you got to understand that. And at that time, especially that day, that day was so lit. Like, that day was like New York versus Midwest. It was yeah. a lot of camaraderie in the building. It was us versus them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, you ain't going to get that. No, You ain't never going to get that feeling. No you know, so it, it, it's different. You know, you learn. We don't know that's a part of history that day. That day we all woke up just yeah. going to battles. We didn't know what it would be, yeah. you know, or where it would go. So it's crazy. But, yeah, right. Mickey Mickey, Mickey was hating a couple of times after that. Mickey had called oh, me oh, one time. Oh, it was I, like, and that's my bro. So, you know yeah. what I mean? I remember Mickey <laughs> called me one time and was like, why you hold your hand like that when you go into those patterns? And I'm like, what you mean? And then he he shows me three battles where my hand is like this. And he's like, don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Mickey, Listen, you know you he's a teacher, man. too close. Bro. Yeah, he's, always, he's, a teacher. he's always a teacher mode, man. <laughs> and now he's doing the school with shit like that. So it's right. like, you know, you see that, it's like, it's crazy. You know, that's, and that's, that's my bro. Nah, that's fam. So we, he he been yeah, on the show, man. Yeah. <laughs> so did J. Cole say I won though? That's that's what can did J. Cole fight for yeah, me? We couldn't get him to like sit and watch, man. We was we was trying. <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't like he wasn't into it. Now. I don't know about now. He might be into it now, but back then he probably he was, watched a couple. Yeah, probably, everybody's watched a couple. He guys, watches a lot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, it's certain things, but you know, like I say, man, I'm I'm just glad I'm a part of that era. Like that yes. draft, you know, I mean, that draft class was amazing, man. Just, just thank you for your time, man. This was this appreciate y'all. Oh, yeah, man, we appreciate yeah. your time. Like we, we don't take this lightly. I know we are taking the time to salute your pen and salute your work and all, but we do appreciate your time. Man, and, most definitely. You know, I'm a, when I come to ATL, I, I gotta pull up on y'all. Burger uh, Bistro, uh, Scott, Scott, Scott's yeah. restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, told him I gotta come over, yeah, come over yeah. here and support. So oh, you know, I, I'm definitely gonna pop crazy. up. Food is yeah, crazy. yeah, the food oh. is crazy. Food is absolutely out of control. Yeah. <laughs> it's lit, man. I'm, it's proud. I'm proud to see you yeah, all that. all our money. <laughs> yeah. We go in there and we go in there and go foolish. Like Say no more, because I ain't skinny core no more, so I'm going to go in there and turn up in there. Cool. We ain't skinny. <laughs> so I know, like, right? I'm over here at 235 right now. So. Man. <laughs> Listen, man, it is what it is. We eating okay. good. We healthy. We exactly. last man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Guys, I appreciate y'all, man. You know, yes, man. it is what you, it is, bro. man. We tap in. Real spitters take no balls off. Huh. Yeah. MCs take no balls off. <laughs>